me and Lulu. We're heading down here, guys. I, I bought a... I was in dire need of an all-terrain forklift because it's so... Even if my little forklift broke down on me, and even if I got it going, some of the things that I... A lot of the things that I need it for, I can't use it. It's one of those little shop forklifts, you know. It's got solid rubber tires on it, and you know as well as I do, if you've been around those forklifts, you get them out on any kind of wet surface or soft surface or gravel, they're helpless. They won't go anywhere. So I've been kind of in dire need of an all-terrain forklift. So as in, I was working on some stuff for one of my customers on one of the ranches, I noticed this, never even heard of it before, to be honest with you. It's called TCI. There was a TCI full drive all-terrain forklift sitting there with a high mast on it. I thought, man, that thing's been sitting there a while. I wonder what's wrong with it. I called Dave and I said, hey, what's the deal with that? He said, well, he said, I put a rear end in it five or six years ago and then they used it. And the mast cylinder blew out of it. And the seals blew out of the mast cylinder. It's been sitting there for three or four years now. So I bought it from them. We're gonna go get the cheetah tank from the shop. Get the cheetah tank to get the tires popped back on the bead. We're gonna see if we can get a decent battery to run over there and put on it to maybe get it started. And uh, we'll see if we can get that mast raised up. We might have to chain it up and see if we can get it rotated to the shop and then we'll fix the mast cylinder. And then I got me a, I've got me a good big forklift, so I'm kind of excited to get it running. So uh, I got a bunch of pump manifold parts. Uh, had a customer bring by. I got went into town this morning and got let's see uh, two eight-inch flanges, one ten-inch flange, one twelve-inch flange, uh, about. 10, in, 10 feet of 8 inch uh, pipe, some 12 inch pipe, some weld on nipples, things like that. So I got to build some pump manifolds. But I'll drop all this stuff off and I'll see if I can find me a decent battery to maybe uh, put on that thing. So, anyhow, we're going to go see if we can get a forklift running today and get it back to the shop. down there by the pool barn. Well, actually, on a big stack of hay there. I think there's an 80, 8670 New Holland sitting there beside it. First thing we'll do, we'll see if we can get it to jump start. We'll put the jumper cables on it first thing, then we'll check our oil and all that stuff. Start kind of looking it over. leaking if I'm going to have to chain the mast up to drive it back to the shop or exactly what we're going to have to do there. There she sits. off the bead that's why I brought my cheetah tank that's usually a fun ordeal trying to get those back on the bead how many tires are flat just well there's two of them yeah this ain't gonna be too much fun I'm not sure it's got two mass cylinders, so I'm not sure which one's screwed up. But... Where is the battery at? What's this thing got in it anyway? Waukesha dresser. Huh. It's got a battery disconnect on there. Alright.
It's got a Rusa Master rotary pump. Let me get my jumper cables. And I'm not getting any kind of action here with the ignition. I don't even see the gauges moving or nothing. Like it's not getting any power back here to the ignition. Disconnect is all in. I should go down here to the ground. That's the ground there. Hmm. Well, is there a neutral safety somewhere on it? I don't see anything there. Titan lug nuts. I don't know what this is about. Is that the shuttle? I don't know. I don't know. This. Seems like that's neutral right there. Huh. Well, a little screwdriver trick. If I can find a screwdriver I don't really care about. Maybe this Pittsburgh pick, maybe, or something like that. Something I don't really hear a whole lot about. Let's see. Let's go from here to... Uh, that's not too good, huh? Should I go directly off the starter, maybe? Batteries. Let me take the cables off and see what the voltage is. They may be totally shot. Yeah, they're pretty bad draining really fast I'll I'll try to put some more charge to it I'm gonna go right off the starter my camera just came apart on me yeah it just broke this camera just broke the mount on the bottom of it Ooh, shit did too much for that no magnet no more magnetic mount for this camera pulled the screws and everything out of the bottom they've rattled out of there they're gone cool so far today's not going so well let's go right off the shelf here sit here and let it charge for a while on the truck and then uh, while I mess with these tires so uh, I ended up using the batteries that I, I had a couple old group 65 batteries that I had pulled out of some customers pick up and replaced with other ones and never took the cores back and I put them on the charger this morning and and then just just for like 10 minutes and then just check the voltage on them and Put my little carbon pile load tester on them and i thought shoot those will those will work to get this thing going so uh anyway 
there's a lot of stuff that I need to do with this forklift. Uh, like, there's a big scrap bin on the east side of the building that I actually tried to pick it up with a little forklift, and it's so heavy it wouldn't pick it up. So, uh, that, that and a bunch of the, that old frame rail that's sitting out there from the one, uh, um, uh, what do you call that? The cutoff frame that we did Tom's truck in when we did the, the carb transplant and that 379 Peterbilt. So there's a lot of stuff that I can use this for. And the other thing that's going to make this a lot handier, instead of using the grader to, uh, <clears throat> pull the tracks back, and there's so, there's just, I'm kind of excited, as you can tell, to get this forklift because there's so many things that I can do with it. It'll just be such a handy tool to have around the shop when when a big piece of freight shows up. I don't have to borrow the neighbor's forklift to to unload it, you know, to unload it. Like all these tracks, I had to go borrow the neighbor's all-terrain forklift because the little forklift, even if it did run, I wouldn't have going to be able to unload him because it was out in the snow. So I'm just kind of excited to get this thing out there and, and use it. So we're going to get these batteries in it, the, the, uh, the new old batteries, and we'll see what happens. burn for a little while to warm the tire up. jack and get it further off the ground. I guess I'll see if I can get it running. I'm either I got to get it higher off the ground for one thing. It's just not high enough off the ground. Man, it really and then this rubber is hard and cold. It don't want to flex. And this new starting fluid you get just ain't worth a shit. Get some ratchet straps maybe and wrap around it once I get it up off the ground. I don't know.
see if I can get it. It's turning over now. So I'm get it primed up, maybe. Is there a bleeder anywhere? Is there a filter there. A hell of a nest down in here. Is it a fuel filter? Yeah, I guess it is. I think. Hate to do this, but I'm in a hurry. I'm smoking now. Just gonna have to let her charge for a while. Well, let's try it again. I'll let her charge for a little while longer. Hard-headed bitch, huh? Mm. Okay. We're out of starting fluid, so we're gonna try one more time. Damn it! Come on, you bitch! I got to run it. See if we can see what's going on up there. What the hell is that? Yeah, it's coming right out of the rod seal. It'll raise up any at all, or you could get the damn thing to chain it up, get it out of here. up like that, throw some blocks under it, then chain it up. Well, I 
ain't gonna happen now. This hose has got a hole in it. It goes to the top of the cylinder. It blew, see? Gotta pull it off. Charging.
know what it's doing, really. I think it's there. I think it's going. I got another idea. Pull the Schrader valve out of here. More volume in there.
bolted on there. Tires not real great, I'll tell you that. Get a shovel. I guess I'll crane this one in, take it to the shop, and I'm gonna put it in front of that heater, and get this tire nice and flexible again. It's just all bent out of shape where it sat for so long flat, and it just will not get even close. I mean, it's such a huge gap there. I'm out of ether, the fucking store, you know, you got a store up here. The people that own the store, they're fuel distributors, oil distributors. And they don't ever have any oil or starting fluid or none of that shit in there. They're always out. Fuck, it just drives me crazy. What the, you know, you're a distributor for that shit and you never have any. Anyway, well, we're getting closer. Oh, yeah, I got to put this hose on. I'll put that hose on. Alrighty. Let's see if I can get this one here to tighten up. The top's tight and the bottom's DIC goofy thing get this thing going get this I'm gonna tell you why that damn I'm gonna tell you why that damn seals out that hydraulic oil is full of water and it rots the seals out in them that's why the seals are out in it so we gotta dump all this I'm gonna probably pour five gallons in it see if maybe I can get it home and then I'm gonna rebuild that mass cylinder and then I'm gonna change the oil and the filters in it get that old rotten oil out of there and they won't do that no more but easy the damage is done the rest of them will probably go now too yeah you can't leave that kind of when you see that milky oil in there you can't leave that stuff in there it'll eat all them seals up I had a road grader that had water and oil like that I mean, I ended up changing every god dang seal and every cylinder on that. And you know how many cylinders are on a damn road grader. Okay. I don't know. I don't think there's enough oil to make it do anything, but... guys she runs I gotta sure does idle high doesn't it
gonna haul this tire. I'm just gonna, I'm going home anyway, and I'm just gonna haul that tire by the tire shop. I got one of them to seat up, but this one here is not being very friendly. I'll just crane her in the back of the truck, and they'll really, they'll probably really like me when they get that. But, uh, let's let the hood back down on it. Yeah, this will be a good lift, man. It's all mechanical, no electronic bullshit. We can fix anything on her real easy, so. Yeah, run this tire in there and let them mess around with that and see if they can get her seated up. I got an alternator setting it. Now before it, I got to pick up. And then, uh, what else? Oh yeah, five gallons of hydraulic fluid will come bring and dump in it. And then I think I I can get it raised up. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to chain it up at. Once I do get it up, where am I going to chain it up at? Got to be a place to chain this thing up. Yeah, I'll figure something out.